Good morning. Okay. Good morning, guys. This is Ron. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started. On yesterday, uh, we were talking primarily from Matthew chapter 16, and we, we started, well, we, we, we talked about several of the verses, but we were primarily talking about uh, verse 18, uh, the gates of Hades or the gates of hell, and we talked about what that meant. And as I mentioned to you when I started, this was really pastor's lesson. Uh, I got excited about it when I went and looked at uh, the Helen, Hellenistic uh, uh, period and and, uh, and and kind of let it add on to what he had given us uh, as a history from, from the uh, Cushites and what happened with, with Alexander the Great from that point on and and uh, what what role this played in in all of that part of history so he's on today uh we'll see if we have any questions and uh, uh let's see if we can see if it's anything I uh, want to add or, or anything you have questions about but uh let's start there and then we'll see if we'll have questions about anything else Matthew 16 and 18. Any questions? Pastor, is anything you wanted to, to, to say about that? Um I don't I don't know what we said yesterday. However, I, I think that um it's important uh that we understand the um Hellenistic period prior to uh, the um, Christian church being established and um, also afterwards, because I think we have lost uh, our, we're not lost, I'm sorry, we have never been taught that um, the Hellenistic period uh, continued uh, from uh, the invasion of um, Kemet. Uh, up until today, actually, you cannot <clears throat> you cannot study um, uh, Christianity without studying the, without including the Hellenistic period because of the influence that it had and has. Oh no! Oh, and by the way, I, I think you've yeah, already I, gone into. Go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I, no, go ahead. What were you yeah. saying? No. No, I, I, I was going to say, I think you already added some some valuable insight to some things we didn't talk about yesterday uh, that that connects all of this to, to Christianity and, and whatnot. So if you care to uh, elaborate a bit further or in more detail, I think it would uh, kind of tie some things together. When we, <clears throat> when we when we um look at what happened where Alexander the Greek invaded um uh, Kemet, and we we've, we've talked about the history of that and how we got to the place of um uh, Jesus being brought into existence through uh, uh Serapis the uh, idol god that the Greeks insisted on. And the Rome, uh, along with the Romans, uh, during the uh, period of um, the Dark Ages, there was um, efforts put forth by uh, the Romans and the Greeks to get us to where we are uh, with Christianity. And those efforts that were put forth was a blending of um, Venus. The god, no, Jupiter, the god of uh, Rome, and Zeus, the god of Egypt. There was a blending of those concepts. And when we um, look at the New Testament in particular, uh, we will see that there is a blend of uh, Rome and, um, and and the Greeks uh, in, in the uh, principles uh, that are presented there. And there is... Uh, plenty evidence that both of them uh, uh, gleaned 
their uh, philosophies and principles from those of Kemet, uh, especially when it came to um, the explanations of, um, of the New Testament, the explanations um, in regards uh, to uh, Jesus. Um, we, we see that in, in, pretty much, in great detail, as a matter of fact. Um, the, for example, the uh, crucifixion involves um, the crucifixion involves Rome more so than the Greek, and the and the um, establishment of a ecclesia, a church, it involved the uh, Greeks more than it did the Romans, and you will see that those are um, similar but two different um, principles that's involved there. Um, the um uh the the Romans um dealt with um more of um ecclesiastical manipulation and the Greeks dealt with more of a uh, emphasis on a god that did not exist uh uh a Ida god actually those the, the existence their his emphasis was there. And when you look at the progression of Jesus through that time period in terms of how they wrote about him, uh, there is a blend of both cultures involved in that. Uh, the dominant culture, when it came uh, to um, religion uh, in, in the beginning was the Greeks and the Romans uh, took over from the Greeks. And the reason they were able to do that is because uh, Constantine was a ruthless leader. And he it, he, it didn't matter to Constantine uh, who got in his way, they had to be moved. And, and he set up armies to make sure uh, that Rome became dominant uh, in the area of religious of religion, and the reason I, they use religion is because um, they saw how the Greeks used it to their advantage, and religion was used to um, make parents docile. And the, and how they the way they did that was by killing their children or their men in front of them, and and the uh, generation became docile. And the Romans picked up on that. The when we talk about the Roman conquistadors or uh, the, um, um, the the purge that the Romans did throughout the world, uh, they they uh, learned their habits uh, from the Greeks because that's exactly the way the Greeks um, conquered uh, Kemet in the same way that we have watched the um, the Crusades of the Romans. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone? Anyone else? Questions? So when Jesus says this, Pastor, what he is uh, confronted with what there was something there was a, a, a small movement that I read uh, during this time too that uh, because all of the regions were not had not yet been occupied and uh, the, the, the Hellenistic period was pushing forward of course but there was also something uh, called Hebrewism that uh, the Hebrews were trying to hold on to their language, although most of them uh, uh, by this time were speaking Aramaic. They were trying to hold on to their faith and their ideology and, and what what that everything meant to them. So speak to that uh, as, as far as, uh, but as, as you, you, you pointed out, the docile attitudes was, was extremely important because uh, it, it, may, it moved to a point where uh, some of the religious leaders could go into towns or cities or villages and take over without force because the people were already full of fear. Um, um, 
there, there is a question as to whether, uh, as to the validity of a Hebrew language, period. Um, okay. The, because the word Hebrew means a uh, river crossing, but there, there is some question, serious doubt about the Hebrew language. And we have, we have bought into it without really looking, without really researching it. And, and what I mean by that is this, um, to this day, Jews don't speak Hebrew, they speak Yiddish. And Yiddish is a language uh, that had its genesis uh, in Germany. And, and um, if you also look at uh, Yiddish, it was spoken by uh, what is called Jews. And if you really dig into it, what you will find is that Jews really didn't would come into existence until the sixth century. And what they actually did, they took the uh, sacred writings of Kemet and out of it came the Old Testament. Um, <clears throat> there, there are no records other than what the Jews wrote of Jews existing uh, before the sixth century AD, not BC, the sixth century AD. And so, so while uh, this uh, so when and when you look at where they came from, they had nothing to do with Africa at all. Um, they came from uh, Eastern Europe, and, uh, and what happened? They migrated from Germany uh, into Eastern Europe, and they began to uh, pillage um, uh, Kemet as, as it had been done years before. And they began to uh, gather writings from Kemet. And in, in those writings, they wrote themselves into history. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, if you look at the history of the uh, Suez Canal, uh, there was no such thing as a Palestine until after the Suez Canal, Canal was, um, uh, was um, brought into existence. When they built the Suez Canal, Canal, they had two things in, in mind. One was a passageway uh, through um, <clears throat> uh, to the Mediterranean and through, in Northern Africa. But the other one was to disconnect Africa from what is called the Middle East now. If you, re if you fill in where the Suez Canal was cut, you will see that all of that area is Northern Africa. Uh, so it was an effort to get rid of Northern Africa. I'm um, get rid of the connection rather between that part of the world and, and uh, Africa itself. Uh, it was a cultural thing taking place where they sought to um, separate, um, quote unquote, Egypt uh, from the rest of Africa. Now, uh, as far as um, the question of, of the Hebrews are concerned, uh, it's simply, if you look at it from the uh, sacred writings of Kemet, what you will find is simply a river cross of meaning that uh, people being brought to a place where they understand who they are. As um, was written in Joshua, uh, you choose this day which God you're going to serve, the God on this side of the river or the other side, blah, blah, blah. So all it was saying is that you make a decision whether you're going to live the life that you have chosen to live or are you going to live the life that the creator uh, desires you to live? Does that make sense? Yes. Are there any questions about that? In comparison, so we, huh? Just in comparison to what we've known as our Aramaic language, uh, the, the two languages are, are pretty similar. Could it be that what we're calling Hebrew came out of Kemet? Um, what we are came out, what we are calling Hebrew came from the Jew. Uh, you, you you won't find uh, I haven't let me put it this way, I have not found any record of a Hebrew lang Hebrew language that exists beyond the existence of what which is called Jews to this day. 
I have not been able to find any mention of anything called a Jew since uh, prior to, rather, uh, the 6th century. If you read the book of the Maccabees, you will begin to see how all of this uh, unfolded. And what happened is when the Jews wrote themselves into history, the what they what they did, um, they manipulated the book of the Maccabees. And the reason it's not in the Bible is because it speaks most 99% of it is history. It can be proven or disproven. The Jews had wrote into Hebrew Israel when it should have been Africans or Israelis or Israelites when it should have been Africans. There, there is no mention of a group of a race of people called Israelites, nowhere. The word Israel simply meaning those who um, would rule uh, as God, which means that you set boundaries in your life the way the creator intended for you to set boundaries in your life. You are the one who set those boundaries in your life, but you don't know what boundaries to set unless you are taught. Who teaches you? In Kemet, it was the priesthood who taught, uh, taught the community, who taught everyone about spirituality. And, and and they they forced it on no one. You had opportunity to embrace it or not to embrace it. So what we see now, the way we see Christianity functioning, Islam functioning, Judaism functioning, is that uh, you take the children and you teach the children, and the children uh, will grow up believing whatever you have taught them. That's how uh, Judaism grew uh, in. Um, in, in, in the last 11, 1200 years. That's how it grew. It grew based upon them taking children and teaching the children. That is the same reason that the United States government took the children from Native Americans and taught them. They Europeanized them by virtue of taking the children and separating them from their families to make sure that when these children grew up, they would they their mindset would be that of a European mindset, and they would fight just as hard to make sure that the the the, the um, Europeanization of this country uh, remained what it was because they knew nothing else. Does that make sense, Ron? I think I I think I heard Audrey speak as well. Ron, yeah, it, it does. A questions about that. Audrey? Um, I was just gonna say that um when the when the Romans finally defeated the people in that area, mainly when they finally defeated the Maccabees, um they didn't want that area to be associated in any way with them. So they began to call, the Romans began to call it Palestine, but I don't know how how much it caught on. Um, I guess it didn't catch on around the world until much, much, much later. But um, they didn't want it, the area to be associated with the Maccabees, so they renamed it Palestine. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Okay, thank you. So what are we seeing here? <clears throat> Excuse me. We are seeing the development of um, a period that led us to where we are now. Excuse me. We're seeing the development of a period that led us to where we are now. Why are we seeing this? Why are we being shown this? We are being shown this uh, because the creator wants us to understand the foundational structure of everything that brought us to the place where we are. And in understanding that foundational structure that brought us to this place, it also gives us not a glimpse, but a true uh, view of how of who we are and how things um, got turned upside down. Uh, 
is also teaching us that you don't hate the people who did it. Um, you you don't um, uh, um, what wish ill will on the people who did it because they quite they they, they didn't know any better. Um, they were not they they were not civilized. Uh, civilized people don't do what they did. So it is up to us uh, from the depth of our hearts uh, to um, bring love and kindness into this earth for the express purpose of um, bringing civilization to the entire earth. And, and that's what we are in the process of doing right now. I know that some find it difficult uh, to, um, to, to um, listen at what we are talking about and they and you view it as 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 history only, but you have you need to understand that um spirituality is history. And and without history, there is no spirituality because you don't know you will not know anything about it. The nature, but you need your phone, please. The nature of spirituality in within itself uh uh bring uh gives us a history of our existence in this earth. And, and I'm talking about the existence of mankind. And the only way to balance that, the only way to bring that uh, uh, to, to a, a, a place where everyone is respected is to expose the true nature of what was and what is. We can't do that if we're afraid to speak the truth. For example, right now, there are the, uh, the uh, news media it, it has uh, joined forces uh, with the the U.S. government and the government of Israel for the express purpose of uh, of uh, criminalizing the students who are fighting for an end to the war in Gaza, and they are they're term they 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 are calling it anti-Semitism when it, it is not anti-Semitism; it is simply a group of, of people saying the war needs to end. But if you call it anti-Semitic, then you get the sentiments of the older white men. Uh, and, and they began uh, to, to uh, criminalize you uh, for the express purpose of destroying you. And, and then they add outside agitators. All of this is, is the same thing that has been done over and over again throughout the years. And and and, uh, and and the reason it is done this way is because the expectation is that when you say anti-Semitic, Christians are going to fight you. Um, you're going to join with the Jews to fight uh, for the, uh, the continuation of that Jewish state. Well, keep in mind uh, that the very ones uh, who are calling people outside agitators, like Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House, is an outside agitator because he went in um, uh, with, without the knowledge of what was taking place or with the distortion of what was taking place. So Christianity and the government and the news media work hand in hand to make sure that everything that stays the way it is. However, at this juncture, the creator is showing us that our desire for, for our order to come to this earth and for mankind to benefit from it uh, is, is, being, is being brought into existence by virtue of the number of our students who are involved in this, but more importantly, most of the leadership in this movement are Jews. So, so it is the children rebelling against the lies that they have been told. So the effort that has been put place for over put in place for over 1100 years with the Jews teaching their children, the children are finding out that what they have been taught is a lie. And, and, and the children are finding out that the very existence that they were given uh, is a lie. They're beginning to see that there were no there were no Caucasians in that part of the world, so it is impossible for that piece of land that's called Israel to belong 
to white folks out of Europe. I'm done. Thank you. Thank Felt you. like I'm remnant, but I hope I wasn't. No, sir. You were not. Oh. Uh, no. Any, any any questions, guys? We started this uh, off this morning looking at uh, Matthew 16 and 18 uh, and uh, from yesterday. And we, we uh, kind of expounded on it out there a little bit. But it's the same part of the same lesson. Okay, Lord, Are there any questions on this or anything else that, uh, well, let, let's, let's follow this version to close this if we're done with it right. for now. Yes, somebody, sir. I was saying something just as you started to speak. Okay, I'm sorry. Was somebody speaking? I was just agreeing that um, what Sage is filling in for us is, is really helpful. That's all I was saying. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else? Okay, any questions about uh, any other topic that or, or comments on any other topic you may have? Okay. Um, I, I have some, I don't know what you talked about yesterday. But, um, I do want us to understand what Jesus was saying, or uh, what they what what written rather that that Jesus supposedly has said. Upon right. this rock, I will establish um, my church, and the gates of hell. I don't know how deeply you got into that. Um, that that those words actually um, were spoken by the priests out of uh, Kemet, and they were used in order to establish this uh, this control, control structure that's called church. Um, these words were a rebellion by the priests of what was taking place uh, in Kemet. The priests were saying that the authority of the powers of, of the Hellenistic or the Hellenistic um, Greek, or, I'm sorry, the Hellenistic way of life or culture will not stand against who we are. They were they what what they were saying in essence was this: the prevalence of what's being taught seemingly is defeating us. However, it will not prevail against us. Is another way of saying, without uh, without regard to how how you have oppressed us, you will never defeat us. It's a way of saying that we are just like the phoenix; we will rise again. It's another way of saying that your culture may be on the surface of our memory, but in the depth of our memory is the culture that we establish in the earth. It is our beginnings that will rise to the surface and, and dispel all the lies that you have told us. That this is the message in, in that and that are saying that um, the Hellenistic attitude of Europe will not prevail against us. And, and, and um, what we are beginning to see is that come into existence because we were taught uh, that uh, the Greeks civilized the world when they were the most uncivilized people in the world. Uh, all of those things are being are coming into view now. Think about it this way. There is the biggest push in history of Europeans seeking to destroy or dispel any history of the African period. And the more they push it, the more they began to see that it is 
dominant, becoming dominant in the earth. The Europeans in America in particular are doing the same thing that the Greeks did in Kemet when they invaded. However, it is reaching uh, a different mindset of people and people are not capitulating to it as was done when they invaded Kemet. The, there has been a conscious decision made to make sure that the efforts are shown for what they are. And, and the efforts are being shown to be the same methods that was utilized in the in invasion of Kemet and the destruction of other cultures. We are in the midst of a revolution that will be fought and is being fought the way it should have been fought all, all the time. And that is, we are in the midst of a spiritual revolution, a revolution of spirituality that, uh, that puts us in the position where we were in the beginning. And that position is to dominate the earth. And domination of the earth is not defeating people with weapons. It is holding a mirror before people so they can see who they are. Even though they are not aware of the mirror that's in front of them, they are beginning to see the, the deceitfulness and the the um the the ignorance and and, and the um uncivilized nature that this world uh, that 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 this uh, that dominates this world and as a result of that the mindset is shifting to that of Kemet to that of the Kushite kingdom where that mindset is the, the whole of humanity must be respected. And if you look at the different religions of Africa, what you begin to see is that all of them are the same as was in Kemet. They have a few nuances that are different because of the, the uh, different places and groups of people where that where they live. Uh, if you look at, for example, the Ifa uh, religion, uh, what you will see are the principles that, that of um, the principles of Mayot are inculcated into the principles of the Ifa, and it, it it means that it is not necessary for us to memorize principles or even to elucidate each one of them when we talk about them. Because we have always been taught the principles without even knowing it. When our parents said to us, you know right from wrong, that's what the principles do. If we think about the things that we were taught as children, when we were growing up, the way we were disciplined, what we the things that we were told are the principles of Maya. They are not principles that that came out of our Christianity. They are the principles of Maya that was that we were taught. And if we were to sit here and talk about what our parents said to us when we did certain things or when certain things took place, we will see that every one of them told us the same thing. And we can take that and lay that list of what they told us beside the principles of Mayot, and we will see the same thing taking place. That's all. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions on what Pastor said? Anyone? Comments? <laughs>
So, but this is Chubb. So they. I'm sorry. They okay. And trying to get um, uh, uh, Israel to stop all this uh, genociding through all that. Uh, it, it's hard to put that in words. Through all that genociding, and they are uh, 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 picking against that. And then the what that country calls trying to call itself Israel. The Yahoo man, he don't wanna knuckle down to what's happening over here about what he's doing over there. I don't understand yes, what you're asking, Joe. Okay. The the president over there in Israel uh -huh. is genocide those people in that area of that country. He trying that part of that Gaza. He trying to take over, and he think he's doing the right thing. But the 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 Israel or whoever people's over here is pushing someone to uh, make them to stop. Stop him from doing all the genociding. Okay, I got you. And so, okay. Okay. I'm done. okay, I got you, Charles. Thank you. Um, what we are seeing in essence in this country is a well, worldwide action. The majority of the younger people are uh, in the uh, uh, who are called Jews are not going along with what's happening in Israel. The money people are. Uh, the Jews who, who control the endowments at college, on college campuses, the Jews who control who get uh, elected uh, to the Congress, they are the ones who's financing this, this theory about being anti-Semitic or this lie about being anti-Semitic. It is not the rank and file uh, Jew. There is um, a news uh, agency that has been established by uh, Jews, primarily those who are survived the Holocaust and their survivors. And they are totally against what's happening in Gaza. However, because the Jews in America control the purse strings of the media, the purse strings of everything else, pretty much. They are able to overshadow what's being said. Look at what happened with Joy's, uh, Joy Reid when she first spoke against what was happening in Gaza they said they were going to give her another program. They literally fired her until the pushback came. And when they saw that the ratings dropped like a, a ton of bricks overnight, they put her back in her place in a, in a uh, spot where she was. So what am I saying to you? This is about money both ways. It's about money influencing. Let, let me be blatant with it. And I don't, I really don't give a damn who like it or don't. This is about Jewish money controlling the narrative of the world like it has always done, especially when it comes to Israel. When the Jews left and began to migrate out of Eastern Europe, and into um, they they went to uh, to, to um, Western Europe, uh, Germany in particular, and from Germany they began to migrate around the world, Australia, the U.S., etc., around the world, and they used their money to influence governments in all of those areas. There was they, they did not go to Northern Africa, and they did not go to Italy. The reason they didn't go to Italy is because the Vatican was there. 
The reason they didn't go to Northern Africa is because there was open resistance to their lies. But they went to the other European countries, controlled countries, that, that they could use their financial influence and that they could actually uh, make efforts to control those countries. If you go to the National Archives and you look at the history of what happened to Abraham Lincoln, what you will find is that um, there was a, 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 a um, Catholic effort from the Vatican to take over this country, and they were going to establish uh, an enclave in Illinois, and Lincoln fought it, and he won in court, and they refused to, uh, to allow them to acquire the property that they wanted. And they promised that they were uh, they were going to make Lincoln pay. And if you trace it through history, you will find that that's where his assassination came in. Had nothing to do with slavery. Had everything to do with what happened with um what happened with um the Catholics wanting to control this country. Well, as quiet as it's been kept since 1948. Since this, this country resisted uh, the Jews, uh, they did not want them in this country out of Germany. They did not want them in Britain. Since 1948, what they have done is made every effort to get into positions of power, not simply by being elected, but by financing elections and controlling media. And that's where we are today. And no one wants to talk about that. And if anyone hears what I am saying, they go say that I am anti-Semitic. First of all, I am I am not anti-mixed race. Sem, uh, Semite is simply one of mixed race. I am not anti that at all. This idea of being anti-Semitic is stupid, crazy, and a lie. It is an effort to make uh, to um, ostracize anyone who's been accused of that, to ostracize them from everyone else and to, and to put a blemish on them. To say that you're anti-Semitic also is a, a back doorway of saying that you're talking about there was no, no um, uh, Holocaust. That's not what I'm saying. It was the Holocaust. I am not denying that. However, I am not going to allow the fear of the um, uh, the uh, for some pushback to stop me from telling the truth. The truth of the matter is this: the Jews are in control of the media, and their children are sick and tired of it. And the, and their children are the ones who's pushing back against them. Their children are the one who is saying they have blood on their hands. The ones who came out of the Holocaust who survived the Holocaust are saying that, th that they have blood on their hands and that genocide is taking place in Gaza. It is not me. It is not you. It is their people who have seen, uh, have seen more clearly what's taking place than they have ever seen since they were uh, 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 replaced in, um, in 1948 in, in that area that was Palestine is not Israel. They are the ones. And the reason they are not there where they are is because the very ones who supplied them with weapons did not want them here. There was a larger Nazi contingency in America than it was in Germany. The largest Nazi contingency worldwide was in America. So, so all of this is a lie. The reason people embrace it is because History is not taught in schools in the way that it should be. And Americans are the dumbest people on the face of the earth when it comes to how government functions and the lies that they buy into without even thinking about what they are buying into. And the ones who are, who are, who are caught up into this and, and who, who defend it more than the ones who establish it are Christians especially African Christians. We, we are more European than the Europeans are in our defense of European ways. And, and we have to admit the truth of that. And we have to admit the truth that every single time that Europeans 
have been able to defeat Africans or any other group of people on this earth, people of color, that the people who were being attacked are the ones who, who uh, sold their people out and bought into the lie. Uh, and, and, and as a result of that, gave full dominance to Europeans in the lives of people of color. And we have to stop pussyfooting around. We have to stop nipping around the edges and just tell the truth, the solid truth about what's happening. If we don't do that, we will never see deliverance for humanity. I'm done. Thank you. Charles, does that answer your question? Yeah, because the more he was talking, the more my eye was opening up to what's going on in this in this in this nation. And, and I know I went far beyond Charles's question, but just it's okay, I guess. I, I'm just I'm just tired of us. I'm tired of us trying trying to make justification for those who look like us selling us out. I'm tired of us. Uh, closing our eyes to the truth. I'm tired of us simply embracing stuff simply because it came from white lips and not the African. I'm tired of that. A, a, a white man can tell you uh, that back in the day, I, I remember this, uh, when people would talk about the ones in our communities who were selling out, they would, call, they would say, well, you know, they always think the white man's ice is colder than the black man's ice. That, that was another way of, of talking about them accepting whatever somebody, some Europeans say, as opposed to accepting what someone who looked like them says. I, and I'm saying right now, the one of the major reasons that I was ostracized by black preachers is because of telling the truth. African preachers in particular don't want the truth. They are Memphite priests. They are no different than the priesthood that brought to limit to power. They are no different than the ones who sold us out into slavery. They are no different. They are still standing in the same place as, as did those in, in, in um, Kemet, telling the people a lie for the truth. There is the... the um, the, the first chapter of, of Maccabees and the fourth chapter of Maccabees tells us exactly what happened then. And, and what you, when you read it, or if you choose to, you will see that it is telling us exactly what's happened today also. And at some point, we got to get sick and tired of being sick and tired of people playing with us like that. And uh, people, um, uh, 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 what, um, treating us as though uh, we have, we do not have the ability to think for ourselves. We have to uh, get to a place where, where greed is not dominant in our lives. And I'm, talk and I'm not talking about just trying to take advantage of people. What I'm saying is this, whenever you say you want the American dream, all you're saying is you want to be like white folks. At some point, we got to get to a place where that does not phase us anymore. When, when we talk about um, that we want to be successful in life, what does it look like? It looks like being like white folks. And you know for yourself, if you tell yourself the truth, regardless of how you call, how successful you think you are, you can be cut off in an instant. You will never be white. So stop trying. You will never have privileges in this country until you buy into the truth. As long as you are living the lie that, that you think that you're going to ever be equal to, to white folk in this country, you be privileged to white folk in this country, if you be a good Christian and a good citizen, you are lying to yourself. You have to tell the truth. And a good Christian is not going to tell you the truth. A good Christian is going to maintain the status quo, and that within the status quo lies our continued oppression and our continued destruction. Thank you. I'm off my soapbox. 
Thank you, sir. I got hey, one more question. Yes, sir. So, the, the war can stop if America quit sending the, we the weapons over there. What Charles Jess, what I'm talking about. That's what I say. Mm -hmm. That's what we say. We've been saying this. We know who's supporting okay. it. We know who's doing this. There's no difference than, than Netanyahu and Biden. There's no difference between Biden and Trump. There's no dis difference between America and Britain or France, for that matter. There's no difference between uh, 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 Germany and, and France. There's no difference between the um, Eastern European nations that have these racist uh, leaders in place now. There's no difference between them. The, the fascist nation you know, is no different than America. America's fascism is just under the covers and it's done in a, in a different manipulative way. You, when you think you're free, you can, be, you can be kept in bondage. If you think you are free, ask yourself, why is it that when you are an African or a person of color and you, your children leave home at night, why is it that you are on edge about them coming back? Why is it that you're afraid of a policeman pulling your children over, but uh, but white folk do not um, do not even bother when their children are pulled over? Why is it that when white kids fight for a cause for people of color, they are beaten the same way that black kids are beaten when they're doing nothing but walking down the streets? If you think that you were free, ask yourself those questions. If you think that you, you don't live in a fascist nation, look at the history of what happened with Mussolini and the, and the people who oppose Mussolini and what's happening in the black communities every single day. The exact same things are happening. And these things don't change by, by, by singing Kambaya and praying. These things only change when you know the truth about yourself. The, the truth will make you free. That is, uh, that 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 did not originate in Rome. That did not originate in Catholicism. That originated in Kemet. The truth always makes you free. The truth will never put you in bondage. So why is it that we run from the truth so so hard? Why is it that we that we uh, act like? Uh, we don't even want to hear the truth. And when we do hear it, we run right back to the lie that, that keeps us in bondage. Why? Why do we do that? Because we have been told by Rome that, that the church is a safe haven. It is not. If it was a safe haven, then why is it that all the politicians who've been through those pulpits in the church, nothing has changed positively for us as a people? Nothing. Not one thing has changed for us as a people. The reason student loans are what they are is because Ronald Reagan and his crew sought to minimize the number of African people who were getting degrees. And that is the reason they minimized the number of uh, the amount of money and the number of programs that gave grants and increased the loans. Why is that so? Because they wanted to minimize the number of Africans who got college degrees. And then when they saw it was not working, what happened? They start increasing tuition to the point where when you, when you get your degree, it is worth nothing because you will never be able to pay the loan off. And the reason that Biden is forgiving loans is not because he loves you. It's because he wants your vote. That's why he's doing it. Now, I don't care the reason as long as he forgives them, but you need to know the truth about the reason he's forgiven these loans. If these loans were from the banks that you were paying back, then how is it that the government can forgive them? It's simply because the government gave the money to Bank of America, Bank of America lent it to you, and now you pay Bank of America, but Bank of America does not give that money back to the government. They're making money off of it. That's why he can forgive them, because they are the one, the government is the one who increased the loans for you. I'm done. I think I'm done for the day, unless there are questions or comments. I just want to thank you, Rev, for bringing all that up, because 
I didn't know, but I know now. No, thank you. I'm done, guys. Yeah, I'm just saying thank you for the questions, Charles. And uh, anyone else, anyone has anything? Okay, this may be a good place to pause. There's no reason to go into a diff different subject right now. So why don't we take a pause here and kind of ponder what has been said. Uh, again, if you have any questions or, and or comments, jot them down or send me a text or send someone a text and we will resume tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow at six, okay? Question. Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. Are we meeting with California today? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm glad. I'm glad you reminded me, Audrey. Yes. Yeah. Three Thank you, Audrey. Three o'clock. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. See you later.